It's a solar streetlight from Timu, and I was thinking, is this going to be any good? And to be honest, it's a lot better so far than I was expecting. So let's take a look at what we got. We got the streetlight unit itself. Looks like the classic aluminium one, except this is plastic, and the glass was held in by little plastic clips at the side. I have liberated those because I wanted the glass out. It was also glued in, which was a bit unfortunate, with a silicone adhesive, but that has been removed. It comes with hardware, including some wall anchors. It comes with a slightly rustable uh, wall mounting bracket that should last a modest length of time. And into that goes this as well. So the light goes on the end of this. This can clamp on here and it supports the solar panel. I was not expecting the solar panel to be much really, but in reality, it's glass. Let me uh, get something to scratch this. It is glass by the look of it. And it's got uh, quite large polystyrene bits pinging everywhere. Quite large sections. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then it comes over here. Another six, so that's 12, giving about six volts from this panel. And it is, you know, you know, with the size of this bench, it is a big panel. Um, on the back, we've got a little plastic cover. And if we slide that cover off, it shows this has just got the wires hooked straight onto the little terminals come off. It's worth mentioning the construction of this panel. This is a sort of plastic film that has been laminated onto the back of the glass. I'm not sure how they actually, what the process of making these panels is, but they have also put some white silicone sealant around the inside here. And there's a couple of uh, holes in the sides and they're the ones that are used to mount it onto the uh, adjustable bracket. Uh, it comes with a connector. And if I plug the connector into the street light, then you'll see it wake up. When it wakes up, can you see these little lights at the bottom here that are showing the charge status? There's four red LEDs and one green one next to it. And then there's the infrared sensor. And then how many LEDs are there? Uh, I made a note of that. There's quite a lot of LEDs. I've lost the note I made of that, but I'll show you. I'll do the, I'll draw the schematic and I'll note how many LEDs are in it. But when the uh, sun goes down and the power goes off, it wakes up, lights up, and you've also got remote control. So you can actually choose to reduce the intensity in this. Uh, when it flashes then that means you've reached the end of that. Uh, you can basically have off, on lights full brightness you can have auto in which case it's going to light when it detects dusk uh, or you get the three hour uh, five hour and eight hour options i shall turn it off not sure what the red button does it doesn't really do much it makes it blink out but it doesn't actually have a function the m button i don't think does anything either just on and off okay right so i'll put the solar panel out of the way oh i did check i put Put this outside, I put a uh, meter on it, took it outside in bright April sun. I wouldn't call it summer by any stretch of imagination, but April sunshine, 1.2 amps, uh, which is very respectable. This thing claimed a six amp hour battery pack. Now that is yet to be tested. Scrunchy glass, this is glass. You can see the slight uh, abrasions where I've been trying to prise it out. It ended up, uh, it was glued just at the ends. I uh, wish I'd known that. It would have been so much easier. I was sliding my spudger backwards and forwards and prising up the screwdriver. Next surprise, it's not using a standard, well, it is a standard lithium cell, but it looks like it's a life PO4 cell. It looks like, I think it is. Um... We can pop that out and take a closer look because that would be quite interesting. It is glued in, unfortunately. Right, tell you what, let's get the cover off. I'll get this pack of hardware out of the way as well. The solar panel alone looks pretty interesting. This plastic housing, incidentally, is very reminiscent of uh, many of the other sort of cheapy Chinese streetlights. I mean, they work. They're fine. They go onto a small pole. Let me measure that, in fact. Let me get a measurement of the pole size it's designed to go on. Uh, I'll also compare it to the bracket. Hold on. Oh, I just dropped the 
drop the calipers in my excitement. Uh, it is approximately 40 millimeters. I'll just check the pull. 40 millimeters. So 40 millimeter pull. Here's the reflector with this sort of blue film in the back of it. Mm -hmm. And here's the circuit board with the little infrared sensor there. A chip. Is there going to be a number in the chip? Is it going to be a standard chip? No number. Looking for the charge circuitry. Initially, I'm seeing, I'll tell you what, I'll take a picture of this and then we can explore it further. I'll also uh, get this uh, cell out and um, I'll do that right now, in fact. One moment, please. Hmm, it says 3.2 volts, so that's a lithium iron phosphate cell, uh, 6 amp hour. Now, I had another cell, where is it? I've got it here. From another light uh, that is the same size but says 3 amp hour. I should remember I've got that in charge. Oops. Uh, let's get the cover off this and see if there's anything underneath because I'm not sure. Is this likely to be a 6 amp hour cell? Don't know. Let's peel this off and see what the actual markings on the cell are underneath their ambitiously labelled stuff. Incidentally, before starting this video, I went on Timu to take a look at this uh, listing for this again, and it had been removed. It said this has been discontinued, but there were other ones that looked very similar that were listed. They do that from time to time. Uh, there are no other markings. There is the little protection board, though. That's interesting. Right, tell you what, I shall put this on test, I guess. Right, tell you what, I shall... Uh, take a picture of this. We'll take a look at the circuitry. I'll reverse engineer it, draw the schematic, and we can analyse it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. I shall zoom down in this. Interestingly minimalist circuitry. Very minimalist circuitry. Ridiculous that a lot of the components in this board are just for the power level indicator LEDs. So we have the supply coming in from the solar panel here, the and here we've got the two negatives are connected together. We've got the positive going straight to the lithium cell. And if I bring in that other lithium cell, because otherwise one isn't test, it's actually just using the protection circuit board, which is optimized in this case for lithium iron phosphate. Uh, but it's using that as the protection. If it charges up that far, if it manages to get enough sunshine during the day, it will cut out on the little D. It's not a DWO one. It is the... The equivalent for lithium iron phosphate. Um, so it goes via this diode, which is a 5 amp diode, and then it feeds the circuitry from that battery connection, noting that because the battery protection circuit will actually break the circuit, the voltage from the solar panel will go up to full open circuit voltage. And for that reason, the power supply to the chip is via a 100 ohm resistor and a Zener diode, which caps it down to 4.7 volts. The infrared receiver is turned on. To keep the current quiescent current low, it's turned on by this uh, chip when it needs it. I don't know if it just pulls it every so often. I'm not really sure. The LEDs, there are 357 white ones, that's a lot. And then there's four red and a green. And each one of those has its own 220 ohm resistor going back to the chip. Uh, when it wants to turn on the lights, it turns on this MOSFET. And it's worth mentioning that this is a universal circuit board, I guess. It's got the position for two MOSFETs and it's got position for three resistors. Uh, it's also got a position for another diode down here. It's a very universal design. But when it wants to turn them on, it turns on the MOSFET, and then it's quite odd. See this blob here, this double blob. It looks as though someone's done something manually to this afterwards. Maybe they've removed a resistor. Maybe they found it was grilling the LEDs, or maybe it was just an option to have a higher power output, and they've removed that. But in this case, it's a very customizable board. It means you can adjust things. You can put in your own components. You can fine-tune it if you wish. Uh, very interesting. Right, let's take a look at the schematic. And it is very, very straightforward. I shall zoom down just a little tiny bit more. Famous last words. Here's a solar panel. Let's say 6 volt. It'll be a bit higher open circuit. 1.2 amps. 
possibly a bit higher in peak summer sunshine. Definitely much lower in winter. Uh, it goes via this SS56 diode. The SS56, the 5 means 5 amp, the 6 means 60 volt. And it charges the lithium cell. There's the lithium cell with its little protection circuit, the life PO4 cell, the lithium iron phosphate. There is the 100 ohm resistor being used to provide a power supply for the microcontroller with 4 point symbol Zener and this capacitor. Um, and then the input to the microcontroller that uses it is used to both measure the charge status. Uh, it's effectively measuring the voltage from the solar panel. But it uh, effectively, is it measuring, I wonder if it can measure its supply rail voltage as well. No, it can't because it's got clamped 4.7 volt. Although, yeah, that would potentially give an indication of the lithium iron phosphate cell as well. But anyway, whatever voltage it's sensing across here, it divides it down a bit and then feeds it to the microcontroller so it can actually determine when, well, when it's dusk or uh, daylight and also potentially the voltage at that point. It possibly detects it flying up really high when the protection uh, kicks in and then it will actually terminate it and show it's fully charged. There are five LEDs. I've only shown one here for simplicity with a 220 ohm resistor. Uh, the four reds and a the green. There's the infrared sensor with its own little decoupling capacitor and it's powered from one output pin from the microcontroller and then it gets an input back in. And there's the output to the MOSFET with a 10k pull down resistor to make sure it's always in a stable known state so this has to make an effort to actually pull that up to actually turn that on and the single 0.62 ohm resistor where you've got a stack of three positions and then 357 white leds that is it it's a very simple circuit it's all fundamentally done in the microcontroller as things these things usually are but it's interesting the most striking thing about the light with its plastic case is just how light it is it's unbelievably light with, uh, well, the battery removed. That really, it's, I'll weigh it and I'll tell you what it weighs. One moment, please. Yeah, super light. The unit uh, weighs 208 grams with a plastic case in the circuit board. That's seven ounces. And just the glass on its own that goes on the front of that weighs 230 grams or 8 ounces so this piece of glass that goes over the front weighs more than the entire rest of the light excluding the battery now while i was weighing things i also weighed this one that is known as three amp hour and it weighs exactly the same as this one that claims to be six amp hour let's uh I, I shall do a test in this i'm trying to think what i can actually test this with because the life pure four is quite uh it's the lithium iron phosphate is a a bit more of an exotic technology so i'll have to find something to test with the correct voltages but uh, that will be worth doing i'll just put this out of the way before i short one of these batteries out but there we go for the money it was a uh, very acceptable i mean i like the solar panel if you know how they make these solar panels i mean there must be videos showing how they make it because it's such a i don't know if they stick the glass the silicon bits onto the glass and then laminate this because this has been laminated on. You can see it's suctioned right in. And I can also see a pattern of a little indents as if something is pressed down here to actually press that in. But there must be a laminating process for that. I'm not sure. Ultimately, it's down to mass production of these things, isn't it? Uh, but that's interesting. Nice, nice solar panel on its own. And this is also very useful. So I may actually, I may actually mount this somewhere and just see how long it lasts. Uh, I wonder how long the solar panel will be for ultraviolet stability, whether that sort of plastic will break down with the uh, light coming through the glass. But that's it. Uh, it's much better than I expected. It's actually quite a, a useful little thing and nicely and very simply implemented. It's a very refreshingly simple circuitry. Um, and I like the status indicators, the, the battery charge indicators, being visible uh, but just by looking up at the light as it's uh, charging just to see how much charge it's taken well, assuming that's accurate but that's it uh, not bad at all it's a very interesting little solar street light